Hello and welcome to this uh, Sunday evening prayer on the first Sunday of Advent. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light that no darkness can extinguish. Grace, mercy and peace from God the Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, creator of light and darkness. In this holy season, you renew our promise to reveal among us the splendour of your glory, enfleshed and visible to us in Jesus Christ, your Son. Through the prophets, you teach us to hope for his reign of peace. Through the outpouring of his spirit, you open our blindness to the glory of his presence. Strengthen us in our weakness. Support us in our stumbling efforts to do your will. And free our tongues to sing your praise. For to you all honour and blessing are due, now and forever. Amen. The day is now past and the night is at hand. Let us pray with one heart and mind. Father of lights, receive the prayer and praise we offer you as our evening sacrifice. Make us a light for all the world, delivered by your goodness from all the works of darkness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Psalm 12. Help, Lord, for there is not one godly person left. The faithful have vanished from among the children of Adam. Everyone tells lies to their neighbour. They flatter with their lips, but speak from a double heart. If only the Lord would cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaks so proudly. They say, by our tongues we shall prevail, our lips are our servants. Who is Lord over us? Because of the oppression of the poor, because of the groaning of the needy, I will arise, says the Lord, and set them in safety from those that snarl after them. The words of the Lord are pure, as silver refined in a crucible, as gold that is seven times purified in the fire. You will surely guard us, O Lord, and shield us forever from this evil generation. Though the ungodly strut on every side, though the vilest lord it over the children of Adam. Lord of life, by the power of your resurrection, deliver us from all selfishness and bring us to the fullness of your joy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke 12, 35 to 48. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this. If the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Peter said, Lord, are you telling this parable for us or for everyone? And the Lord said, Who then is the faithful and prudent manager whom his master will put in charge of his slaves to give them their allowance of food at the proper time? Blessed is that slave whom his master will find at work when he arrives. Truly I tell you, he will put that one in charge of all his possessions. But if that slave says to himself, My master is delayed in coming, and if he begins to beat the other slaves, men and women, and to eat and drink and get drunk, the master of that slave will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour that he does not know, and will cut him in pieces and put him with the unfaithful. That slave, who knew what his master wanted but did not prepare himself or do what was wanted, will receive a severe beating. But one who did not know and did what deserved a beating will receive a light beating. 
But everyone to whom such has been given, much will be required. And from one to whom much has been entrusted, even more will be demanded. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. Yesterday in the cathedral we celebrated with Wendy Brack and Sarah Dully who are now called to the order of priests as the prayer book collect prays. The ordination liturgy holds intention, solemnity and delight with possibility and expectation. Just so, the season of Advent that the church has begun today in, indeed, the Gospel reading for the first Sunday of Advent can jar preachers and congregations alike because the Advent Gospel never begins from the beginning of the story of Jesus. It dives into the moment when the focus turns from the ministry of Jesus amidst the people uh, to the way of the Passion and towards the cross. Year A, B and C, Matthew, Mark and Luke, each in their ways, we get apocalyptic images of the end of all things, the Son of Man coming in glory, final judgment and we've been looking at that in Matthew and this morning Mark and right now we've heard that from Luke so here solemn expectation looks more like it's to the front and center for disciples than delightful possibility beware be alert keep awake each must keep doing the good work that they've been given we've been given always expecting the son of man who's coming at an unexpected hour. Advent Calendar is a poem by Rowan Williams. It was published long before he was Archbishop of Canterbury. Uh, and the first three standards, stanzas of, of Advent Calendar evoke the experience of waiting expectantly through images of northern autumn turning to northern winter he will come like last leaf's fall he will come like frost he will come like dark and the stanzas go on with images that follow uh, that might not translate to advent in our south where it's blowing a gale and hot outside today in this heat wave but the final fourth stanza reads he will come will come will come like crying in the night, like blood, like breaking, as the earth writhes to toss him free. He will come like child. This, I think, does give us a space to, to know how the apocalyptic advent consciousness works, the consciousness we're invited into by that turning point in the gospel story. The final coming of Jesus, even the arrival of our own deaths, which, which can be a, uh, a tough thought or, or a companion that, that focuses the living we do day by day, even these will be disruptive as the birth of every child and in some ways we're never ready for the disruptions. In others... We know that disruptions will come and, and our attentiveness to the moments of life day to day and our attentiveness to the needs that come up for those we love and for ourselves day to day, these are a discipline and a preparation for the openness to God's purposes in all things. And God knows we're all wired to those disciplines in our own access in myriad ways by our experiences and our dispositions. The rhythm of this nation means that Advent every year juxtaposes the sense of things to finish with the sense of things to come. You take the school year as a picture of it. You know, this year, like any other, the close of the school year brings gladness about learning and growth that's happened and gladness that it's all about to be over for a moment too. And, and this year, there's an added hope that the year to come might be a lot less unusual, a lot less restricted. The disruption is a long-scale disruption. It's there, and we live into it moment by moment, day by day. But maybe with a bit of luck, uh, next year will have a more familiar shape to it, even as we live into the disruption that has been this year. 
And we'll come to pray tonight about the pandemic being up to different places in different places. Advent invites us to hold together, letting go again of self-reliance and self-centeredness alongside that finishing off and looking forward tension. There's two studies produced in the diocese for this Advent. They're both worth a look, Pray and Advent in Creation. Each of them in their own way, in their own accent, offers to accompany us on the Advent journey. This Advent in all ways, may we expect God to be crafting the stuff of our lives, even when it remains a mystery. May our hearts be opened by the Spirit to the love of God unfurled in the coming of the Son in great humility. May we prepare day by day for the disrupting the love of God with solemnity and delight, possibility and expectation. The Song of Mary, nonetheless, goes in its way with Advent. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour, who has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. God has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. The Lord has shown strength with his arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put on the armour of light now in this time of mortal strife. This mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came among us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In this evening time, we bring before you the life of the world, knowing that there are those who are rising and those who are setting themselves down to sleep. Knowing that the effects of the pandemic are very different in different places at different times. We thank you for the relative ease we know in Australia just now. We do pray for those places where there's some uncertainty, particularly South Australia. We pray for the life of the church in the midst of pandemic throughout the world, all those who are giving themselves either through the agency of the church or through the agency of being faithful health workers, researchers, doctors, nurses, others, people in government, whatever the agency where Christian people find themselves living their lives, those who are living heroically, those who are living uh, faithfully in the midst of families, however that is. We thank you for people's responses. We thank you for cooperation with neighbours of goodwill. We pray for places where there is not peace for places where there is unrest for communities where things are not as they might be. We bring before you all those who are sick at this time. Those who are fearful. Those who seek to comfort care. 
and abide with people. We give thanks for those who've gone before us too. We pray that we might strive for the well-being of all that is in the time we have in the world and that by your spirit we may know your purposes in all of life's pleasures and pains and might know the love of Christ in life with thanksgiving. Be present, merciful God, and protect us through the hours of the night that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may rest on your eternal changelessness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ equip us with everything good that we may do his will, to whom be glory for ever. Amen.